Hello there. Hello there. Come on in. Fix the volume, get everything together. Mm -hmm. um, uh -oh, oh. Hello, everybody. Please forgive me. I'm trying to do a link, but I can't figure out how to send the link. Hey, sister. Carly. Mm-mm-mm. Good morning, sister. Nope. Good morning, everybody. My apologies. I'm trying to figure out something. I'm trying to share this live, but I'm I'm not able to share it. Hmm. Can someone put the link, like the share link, in the chat so I can share this live? Can somebody do that for me? I don't know how to do it. I just watched the replay. God sees all. <laughs> oh, bless you. That was a tough, that was a tough one for me. Wednesday was tough, tough, tough. I did not post that to YouTube because I felt like those that needed to see it were present. Mm -hmm. I felt like those that needed to see it were present to see it. And um, yeah, I kind of let that be that. So good morning, everybody. Andrea, you're amazing. Let me see if I can copy it. All right, let's see. Mm -mm. Oh, I can only delete it. I cannot. This is crazy. Wow, wow, wow. Sharon, I cannot. Um, Wow. Hmm. Well, I see where you can ban people now. <laughs> I see where you can get yourself banned, honey. Yes, you can get banned off of, off of somebody's live. That's good. You can suspend that person. That's good, because, you know, it do be some people coming on doing the most. But, um, yeah, I can't copy it for whatever reason. I tried the one Andrea son, sent and the one you sent, Sharon. So, um, okay, well, I can't send it, so um, I just got to focus now. Okay, hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Morning Manor. Yes. I'm your girl, Jacina K, and you know, we're gonna have some conversation this morning. Ah, God been talking to me about a particular verse this morning. So get your Bibles. You probably know it by heart, but I want you to grab it anyway, because I want us to kind of dive in um, to it. Okay, go ahead and get your. Get your Bible. 
Father, we thank you. We love, honor, and adore you because you're good. You're amazing. You're, you're awesome. Y'all, I need y'all to pray. I already know. I already know it's about to go down. I need you to pray because um, I can already tell the enemy does not want this live to go through. He already messing with the live. So pray, pray, pray. I need you praying this morning. He messing with the recept with the reception. He messing with the Wi-Fi. He's messing with it. Okay. I have not been able to go live on my computer in two weeks. I can't even pull the camera up. I'm trying to pull it up as I speak to see if I need to switch over. I can't. So I'm telling you, he, listen, I hear that in the spirit. Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you that there is shall be a mighty move of God on this live today that those that even watch the replay they will feel the fire they will see they will feel the presence of the living god we thank you father that you are doing something miraculous right now hallelujah glory to god you're doing something absolutely miraculous eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor has it entered into the heart of man what you are getting ready to do Oh my God, you, I, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that this word will go to the ends of the earth, that people will hear this word. This will not be a hidden word, hallelujah, but this will be a word that people will hear, they will respond to how, as they, as they begin to get it in their spirit as they begin to meditate and marinate on this word. I thank you, Father, that it is going to cause your people to leap over, listen here, leap over mountains. I'm talking about give you a joy that you've never experienced, a peace that you've never experienced in the name of Jesus. I thank you. That as we talk about Psalms 23 on this morning, that it will inspire a calm. <laughs> it will inspire a calmness, a, a, a Holy Ghost anointed peace that can come only from the Father. I thank you, Father, that this word will be sharper than a two-edged sword, while at the same time be comforting and encouraging. I thank you that this will be a word that we will never forget, because you are going to speak to me, speak through me, and then speak back to me. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. Speak, Holy Spirit. We are listening. We are ready. We are listening. We are ready. We are listening. We are already have your way in this line today have your way in me on today i decrease completely so that you can move on the inside of me do what you do do what you do sir do what you do do what you do do what you do because so do what you do daddy do what you do and we give you praise <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and we give you praise come on here and we give you praise in Jesus name. Come on, church. Say amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Come on. Say amen. Araba Sunday. La Koshoto. Itantanda Raba Setere Raba Hasata. Ikendere de Beke Soto Roko Rama Hasande. Listen to me. Psalms 23. We know the psalm. We can we can recite it. I hear you. Holy Spirit said, you get your Bible. You get your Bible. This is something that the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me about as of late. When he gives me a scripture, he's reminding me of the importance of going to the word and looking at it. I'm telling you, it's something about when you look at the word. When the word is 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 in your face, uh, we have gotten so accustomed to just quoting it. And yes, when we quote the word, it carries a power 
in and of itself because we know that words have power. Words are power, right? They create atmospheres. They change atmospheres. They shift atmospheres. Your words have the power to do things that silence could never do. That's a word for somebody. Your words have the power to do things that silence could never do. Right. So God is saying to us, I understand and I love the fact that you quote, you you repeat from your mouth what I said. But the Holy Spirit is saying to us on today, I don't need you to just, just repeat it. He said, I need you to meditate. See, when you meditate on something, you, 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 you're doing multiple things. You're looking at it and you're reading it over and over and over again, right? We understand as teachers that we have to, we have to present the information to a student multiple times before that student actually grasps that concept, before they take a hold of it, before it becomes ownership. Come on here. Before ownership, is taken on that word. They got to see it multiple times. We cannot expect as a teacher for a student to see something once, even twice, even three times and say, okay, you should have it by now. The Holy Spirit has convicted me many times while standing in front of my students when I've said to them, I told you this already. <laughs> He'll remind me, JC, just as I told you already and you too forget and you have been reading my word, you have been hearing my voice, you have been following me over and over time after time season after season and yet you forget give them some grace come on here give them some mercy listen give them some compassion back yourself up and repeat it you've got to repeat it until you know that they got it once you know that they got it then what you do is you hover over that word come on here Yes, teach me. You got to hover over that word. What do I mean when I say you hover over that word? You make sure that you bring it up periodically. You bring it up periodically to make sure that they got it. Right? You throw something out there. Remember when I said, fill in the blank. Complete this sentence. It's like if I said right now, God has not given us a spirit of fear. You were feeling like, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. They that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not. You see what I'm saying? Same thing. That's when you know it. But he said you don't know it until you walk in it. Lord, you're going to have to you gonna have to help me today. You're going to have to help me. I got my help today. <laughs> You don't know it until you walk in it out in your life. You know how a person likes to quote a scripture? Like they like to say something over and over. Even when we're conversation, conversation, we could be talking about, well, I forgive, you know, I forgive people when they do stuff to me and I let stuff go and this and that. And I walk in the love of God. Do you really? See, you don't really know something. Something has not really taken root. It's sad. Uh, something, things don't really take root in your life until we're able to see evidence. Somebody say evidence, evidence. You know when you got it, when evidence shows up in your life. Who am I talking to? If you're saying that you have the love of God, I got to go here because, listen, this is where the Holy Spirit is going. So this is for somebody. We'll come back to Psalms 23. We just, we just rerouting. The GPS has just told us to, to take a quick right. Get off the interstate for a second. Go over here in the Wawa and get a cup of ice and some drinks. The Holy Spirit said, when you out here telling people, oh, I love, you know, I love God. I love people. You know, I, I forgive people. I let stuff go. And God said, in a situation will pop up, a test will come. Shit. You listen to me, baby. You got to understand that in this walk, you're going to be tested. It's a part. It is. It's a part of the journey. Tests come to prove what, listen, tests come to prove what you know, not know. Hear me. Not what you know, intellect, no, but what you know in your Noah, 
What's happening in you? What maturity has taken place while you've been walking with the shepherd? What have you gleaned from, learned from? What, what have you taken hold of? What has taken hold of you? Are you really connected to the vine or are you out here just, you, 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 you just sliding on leaves? You just sliding on the branch. You know, you playing with the branches, but you're not really connected to the vine. Ooh, I heard you. Let me tell you something about a, the, the difference between a branch and the vine. The vine, the, listen, the vine is the actual, uh, uh, the, the tree. If this is the tree, we'll make this the tree. If this is the tree, right? This is the vine. This is the tree. These are the branches. This could come apart and you in trouble. Branches break all the time. You see how it is now? It's disconnected from the vine. God's saying, I don't need you to be connected to the branch. Where are we going? I hear you, man. Jesus. Branch. Branch could be anything that's not him. <laughs> better catch this the branch is anything that's not him god so anything else is simply a branch and listen it can, it, it can disconnect from him at any moment this is why listen to me this is why you don't put your trust in this is this Bring it together. Stay with me. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. I'm telling you, he's giving me so many scenarios. I can't even, I can't even catch them all. God is saying to you today, some of you are not connected to the vine. Therefore, when things happen, you fall off. You get in the flesh. You become prideful. Uh, you don't walk in love. You say you do. See, intellect. Will cause the mouth to, baby, intellect will cause that mouth to say anything. That no, that intellect, the head, just because you quote scriptures don't mean you know God. Baby, the enemy quotes scripture. Just because you say you're something, it doesn't mean that you are that. When you are connected to the vine, you can't help but act like that which you are connected to. Oh, I got it. I, I, I heard you. I heard you. I was just trying to make sure. God said it's kind of like this. Have you ever been told that you look just like your daddy? You look just like your mama? Or there's some type of characteristic, there's some type of trait that you possess that other men, oh, I knew that was you because you walk just like your mama. Oh my goodness, you laugh just like your mama. Oh my goodness, if that boy don't talk like his daddy, who is it that someone has told you you sound, you sound like, you look like, you act like, you behave like. That's because you came from the vine. <laughs> you came from the vine. God says, when you act like me, talk like me, move like me, think like me, then you're connected to the vine. But if you don't, you just a branch. Baby, come for me. You just a branch, boo-boo. You just a branch. How many of us are really connected to the vine? And how many of us are really connected to the branch? Because let me tell you something. Many people think they're connected to the vine until life happens. When life happens, oh, life will show you whether you're connected to the vine or you're simply connected to the branch. Okay, and that has been your lesson for branches and vines this morning. And we're going to put this inside. 
You better be connected to the right source. That segues us into the 23rd Psalm. Since we are here saying we connected to the vine. Since you're, I'm connected to the vine. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see then. If you are connected to the vine, if you say I'm connected to the vine, I need you to talk to me in the chat. I need you to put it in the chat or I need you to throw some hearts up, right? I need you to throw some hearts up. I need you to respond to this question. Would you say that the Lord is your shepherd? Don't go deep. Don't go deep. Just stay just stay right here. Don't go deep because y'all know when you ask a question, y'all Christians can go real deep. I want you to ask yourself, is the Lord truly your shepherd? Yes, yes, or no? It's only two answers. Drop it in the chat. If you say the Lord is not truly my shepherd, like I don't have the revelation. That's what I'm asking you. Do you have the revelation that God is truly your shepherd? If you do, put a heart in the chat. If you do not, put a, put a, put a, put a thumbs up in the chat or throw up some hearts or throw up some thumbs. Let me see what I'm working with. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. I see you. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. All right. I need to switch my camera angle. Um, Y'all bear with me this morning. I need to switch my angle. One day I'm going to have the perfect equipment. All right, so I see Latasha said, yes, he is my shepherd. Sharon, Shamika, all right? I see some yeses. I saw some hearts go up, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I got a few minutes. I got about 20 minutes. I need somebody to tell me when it's 825, dog, 830, because I got to get down here and get some breakfast. It's the last day of Teacher Appreciation Week. So to all of the teachers, happy Teacher Appreciation Week. Thank you for what you do. Amen. Thank you for what you do. So this morning we're talking about the Lord is my shepherd. The only thing I want to hit this morning is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I just want us to sit right there for a second. The Lord is my shepherd. All right. I'm going to be doing some, some, um, some searching, okay? I'm going to be doing some searching. So, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Another translation says, what translation is this? Another translation. It's the NIV. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Let's say that again. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Oh, Jesus. Come on here. Mm-hmm. 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Hold on. I want to go to Bible Hub. If you do not know about Bible Hub, you need to check it out. It's amazing. Okay, we're going to Bible Hub. I want to see it in some different translations. Okay. It says... The Lord is my shepherd. The NLT, the New Living Translation says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The New American Standard Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. Come on here. 
I will not be in need. I'm telling you, somebody need to, you need to get this in your spirit today. I'm doing my best to try not to holler. But baby, this is a hollering word. You know why this is a hollering word? Because sometimes, I just need to tell you this just in case you have to get off. I need to tell you this so you can hear it in your spirit. I'm coming to talk to you this morning and remind you that the things that you are in need of, whatever it is, I am that I am sent me to tell you his shot. He sent me to tell you that he is your shepherd. He is your lead. He is your guide. He is your provider. He is your way maker. He's the door opener. He is the bridge over troubled water. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's every single thing that you need. He told me to tell you this morning that you have this little problem. Ah, you have this little problem where you put him in a box. Do I have a box? I have a box. You have a problem where you put God in a box. And he is saying, I, oh, 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 I got a better one. Uh -huh. He said, you keep putting me in this box. And when you need something, yes, you pull it out. Yeah, yeah, God, I need some money. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, God, I need some help. This is what he's saying. Anything you need. You, you you come to the box and you start pulling out. He said, but what I what I want you to do, he said, the problem that you cuss on, slow down, slow down, slow down. The problem, the problem, the problem, he says, is you only see it one way. You only see it one way. You only see it one you only see that I'm a provider for money, but I'm not a provider of peace. You only see that's a babosha. You rasata He said, You only see me to heal a headache, but you don't think I can heal cancer. Nigga, you only see me one way. You got me in this box. And this box has confined you to think that I only work in one way. You see how this tissue? It works in one way. It works in one way. God says, if you open the box. I can do multiple things. Ooh. Help me at these people. School catching the Holy Ghost. God says, take me out of that box. Take me out of that box. I'm bigger than the box. I gave man the idea to create the box. Take me out of it. I was talking to my friend this morning and I said, I'm believing God to be debt free. I'm believing God for my debt to be cleared. I even got this little reminder right here at my desk. I look at it every day. God told me this morning I was in the bathroom. Y'all know where he gets me at. In that bathroom. Doing my little skin care. And the Holy Spirit said, Jacina, you don't believe that I am your shepherd. I said, yes, I do. He said, no, 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 you don't. He said, you don't believe that I'm your shepherd because you only believe that I can do what I need to do in your life in one way. Your mind is so finite. It's so fixed that you only believe that I can heal you this way. You only believe that I can pay off this debt. See, my this has been my confession. God supernaturally canceled my debt. Now, he can supernaturally do it because he supernaturally canceled my student loans at the beginning of this school year. He did it. Supernaturally. I kept saying, I'm going to check my mail or I'm going to check my email. I've been saying this for several years. And I am going to get a letter, whether it's by U.S. Post Office, by the Postal Service mail, or whether it's by email. I don't care how it comes. Listen to this. Listen to what I said. I don't care how it comes. I'm looking for a letter. They're going to tell me, Miss Thomas, this debt has been paid. In August of 2023, I received an email and the email stated, your student loans have been forgiven. I hadn't even paid 
get on them student loans. God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless. I'm going to blow your mind. Bless you. I'm going to bless you in some areas that you ain't, you don't even deserve me to bless you in because you didn't do in the natural what you were supposed to. Who am I talking to? You didn't do in the natural what you were supposed to do, but I'm going to bless you anyway because I'm God. I am Jehovah. You see, when he says, I am that I am, what he's saying to you is fill in the blank. Whatever you need me to be, I am that. He said, I am your shepherd because shepherds are watching to protect the entities of God. In that he watches over us. See, a shepherd watches over us. A shepherd is a protector. It acknowledges that God is the source of understanding and of all help. Let me say that again. A shepherd is a protector. A shepherd takes care of his sheep. He makes sure that whatever they need, he provides it. God is saying to somebody, what is the need that you need me to provide? He said, ask and it shall be given. Yeah. Believe and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be opened. Now, when you do that, when you ask, don't get specific Listen, there are some prayers you need to be very specific about when you pray to God. Let me hope you. But there are other things you need to leave it up to God as to how he's going to do it. See, in some of you, you're believing God for a particular thing. And the, you think the only way that your spouse is going to come to Jesus is if you keep playing playing uh, sermons and sending sermons to him and playing them around the house. Or you taking the church. Do you know God can get that joker? Listen to God can get that joker while he got a bottle of alcohol in his hand. While he's sipping on some whatever Ciroc, whatever you sip on. He could, he could get that joker while he over there drinking, trying to get drunk, trying to get buzzed, trying to get tipsy. God can get in there and get him just like that. God don't need your help. God don't need, listen, God don't need you to tell him how he going to do what he's going to do. Stop saying, God, oh, God, I'm going to believe God to cancel my debt. Maybe he wants to give you the funds. Listen, because this is the part that we don't, we ain't ready to, oh, Lord, yes. Maybe he wants to give you the funds. To pay it off. Maybe he may, maybe he's going to help you to learn how to discipline your spending so that you can pay your debt off. See, this is the, this is the, he says, I am your shepherd. You shall not want. That means I am your lead and your guide. How has God been trying to lead and guide you to doing something that needs to be done on your part so he can go and do what he needs to do on his end? You got some problems with your health, but you want to eat any kind of way. God saying, I'm your shepherd and your God. I'm the one that's been whispering to you to take care of this concerning your eating, to do this concerning your health. But you're not doing it. But you want to say, Lord, Lord, you know. I'm just believing God, these pounds are going to fall off. Pounds are not going to fall off. <laughs> You're going to have to do something to get them off. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just believing God to restore my relationships. Well, what type of healing? What, what, what is your plan? What are you doing to, to, to seek healing first for yourself? We, we, oh, you got too many things you're trying to tell me to say and I got to go in five minutes. God says, I am your shepherd. You shall not want. What is the want? What is the want? What is the thing that you are needing from the shepherd? Because it says, not only did the shepherd provide nourishment and direction, <laughs> but in this psalm, David is trying to convey the idea that the shepherd provides safety and protection because sheep are extremely skittish and fearful. But the shepherd was equipped to protect the sheep. That means that the role of the shande rabaso kola ki shande rabase ola bashe kete tete roko fala bashe. These are the characteristics of a shepherd. A shepherd. It's too much for me to do today. A shepherd creates a boundaries. <sighs> a 
A shepherd goes ahead of you and you are to follow. Some of us are going ahead of God and we're wondering why. How are you going to go ahead of God and then wonder why things aren't working? Thank you, T. I got five minutes. You are going ahead of God. You're not consulting the shepherd. You're making decisions on your own. I'm telling you, I hear him so clearly. There is someone that is saying right now. Thank you, Latasha. There is someone that is saying right now. Well, I asked God for such and such. And let me tell you something. The good shepherd, your guide, your lead, he has already given you the answer to that which you have asked him of. But listen, there's a step missing. Yours. Take God out of this box. That's for one person. You got God in a box and you're only believing that he's going to heal you. You know, oh, why Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I just heard God say this. This is for somebody. Your healing is going to come when you forgive. I'm just telling you what I heard. God says, when you forgive and you release them, that's when you're going to be healed. You are always going to carry that until you truly walk in the love of God towards them. He did not say that you have to reconnect. Listen, restoration does not mean reconnection. Does not mean you got to connect again. It simply means that you got to go and you got to restore. Listen, you got to restore peace. When you restore peace, then whatever God chooses to do, let him do it. That's for somebody. The other is for the person that keeps putting God in a box. You only think that God is going to do it one way. Or you only see him, God can heal a headache, but he can't heal cancer. The, uh, the lies. He can't heal uh, uh, leukemia. A lie. Oh, I'm going to have to take this medicine the rest of my life. A lie. Let God do what he want to do in your life. How he wants to do it. Give him room. Give him room to do how he wants to do. What he wants to do in your life. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The qualities of a good shepherd. He creates boundaries. The good shepherd is trustworthy. The good shepherd is a provider. The good, the good shepherd makes sacrifices. See, the good shepherd makes sacrifices for you that you don't even know about. That's why he says, listen, you don't have a need. When you, listen, when you follow me, when you follow me, the Lord Jesus, you don't have a need that I can't fix. You don't have a need. Do you understand? He is invested, he is relational, and he is a visionary. The shepherd, he's, listen, sets boundaries, is trustworthy, is a provider, is sacrificial, doing stuff for you. Look what the man did. He died. So that you could have life. The good shepherd will lay his life down for you. You, you, you. Oh. He's invested in you. That means you can make a mistake and he's still going to be the shepherd. That means you could do something you ain't got no business doing and he could, he, he will still be the good shepherd. There is nothing that you need. That God has not, listen, that God does not already have waiting for you. I want to go back to Beck's message. I saw Bex type something. Bex, are you still here? I saw you type something and I want to read it before I leave. The Holy Spirit is telling me to go back. I'm going to put this out there. When God is my shepherd and you shall not want, this means 
to me that all I need, I have. He is my source. That's it, Tasha. That's it. Everything else is a resource. Everything else is a resource that he chooses to use. Come on, Latasha. Help me stay on track. This has been on my heart all week. I shall not want. I legit said yesterday, there is no lack in my life. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, here is your confirmation. He's saying to us, I am your shepherd. I need you to study this this weekend. I'm going to study it this weekend because I I really want us to break this down. I feel like God is just giving us this to kind of get us like in a place where we're hungry to know him as the shepherd. I, I listen to me. I, I God is talking. God is talking. I'm going to read this part and then I'm out. A shepherd is a protector of a flock. To be among the Lord's flock means that he is your personal guardian. It is his life on the line to see to it that you are safe from harm, that you are cared for, and that you grow up healthy and strong. So to say that I shall not want means that I will lack for nothing. I need you to say that with me. I will lack for nothing. Say it. I will lack for nothing. He will provide for my every need. Say it. God will provide my every need. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. When you say this, it expresses his your confidence that the Lord is your shepherd. Therefore, you should have no worries or no fears. All arguments are settled by this one statement. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I have everything that I need. It means that you have total confidence in his shepherd, in the shepherd, and in his ability to protect and take care of you. That's what you say when you say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. So this weekend, I need you to study this because I got to go. It's about to get loud down this hallway. I need you to study this this weekend. I need you to understand that he is your shepherd, your lead, your guide. Stop putting him in a box. You pray the prayer and you let God determine how he wants to make it come to pass. That's where we get. Listen, this is when now we get weak in faith. This is when we start to doubt God. This is when it's hard for us to believe what he said because we're looking for God to do it in a particular way. This is what God is saying. Listen to me. This is what God is saying. I got a million and one ways to bless you. I got a million and one ways to get to you what you need to get. Stop trying to be God. Woo! Stop trying to be God. Stop trying to be me. Listen. And follow me. Just believe what I said. If I told you, if I told you that I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of you. Why? Because, listen, I am a man that I should not lie. I am not, listen, I am a man, I cannot lie. I cannot, I cannot, he cannot lie. Nor is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to make it good. If he promised you something, hear me, if he promised you, he's got to come through. But you got to take your hands off the wheel and let him do it how he want to do it okay <laughs> I ain't mean to yell at you I ain't mean to yell at you but God I'm, I'm, I'm telling you I'm telling you he cannot lie now he can't he's gone he ain't us we lying all the time making promises and carrying on and don't keep them but God he is a promise keeper way maker Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You might need to remind yourself this weekend. He, listen, he said, I shall lack nothing. He said, he shall provide everything. He said, I will provide everything that you need. Everything, everything means all. It means nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. Whatever you need, God is going to provide it. Now, it's on you to trust him. It's on you to take your hand off the wheel and let him do what he going to do. I promise you. He Listen, he's going to surprise you when you do that. And it is going to build your faith to see. Because God said, I got a million and one ways to be your provider. You ain't got to go to no man to take care of you. I got you. You ain't, you ain't got to go to no pay loan. I got you. 
Some of us is going to require discipline. Some of us is going to require faith. Some of us is going to, listen, some of us is going to require us to walk on water. Some of, listen to me. Take your hand off the wheel and get and, and take God out of that box you got him in and let him do what he does best. And that is be God. Be God. Now, I, I, I got to go now. I got to go down here and down this hallway and get this breakfast. Okay? All right. I love y'all. I love you. I'm just, I'm just.